Today I thought we'd go over Litzwire and what I've been learning about it. It's used a lot, or at least talked about a lot in Crystal Radios. And you can see my working title is Litz. The, yeah. And along those lines, I'm making mistakes so you don't have to. I went out and bought $50 worth of Litzwire to learn about it. and. I'm going to tell you why that was uh, a waste of $50. Okay, let's move on. First of all, what is Litzwire? Well, it's a German word. Uh, it's from Litzendracht. Uh, it means woven wire. And it's literally wire that's been woven or twisted in order to derive certain desirable characteristics. So it's a multi-strand cable and each wire is individually insulated. So all of these strands are separate. They are not like a typical twisted wire where you have bare copper and it's all touching each other. Each one of these is an individual wire. Uh, it's commonly used in AM radios, uh, for example, crystal radios. And the most common I can find is something called 175 slash 46. And that means that there's 175 strands like this, there would be 175 of those. And each one of them is 46 wire gauge, which is 0 0.0406 millimeters. So if that sounds small, that's really small. You're right. So again, it's woven or twisted and each strand is thinner than skin effect for that frequency. Now this is also bandied around a lot. And you say, what does that really mean? Um, so for example, if this is, a single strand of copper wire, one of these things, then the skin effect is the fact that current has a tendency in AC to flow in the outer part of that. And the higher the frequency, the more the current is pushed to the outside. So some examples of skin depth in regular copper, and that changes with different types of copper with silver and so on. But for example, at hundred kilohertz, which is below the AM band, the uh, delta over here is 210 microns and that's equivalent to 32 wire gauge which is already getting tiny at one megahertz which is the middle of the am band uh, the skin out here is 66 microns or 42 wire gauge and at 10 megahertz which is above the am band it is 21 microns or 52 wire gauge and we're talking about really thin uh yeah so down here you can see some notes i made a thousand mu m is uh micron and it's one millimeter so it's it's small stuff so why do we use litz wire and the answer is improved efficiency so you get pure inductance um yeah so when you're winding a coil litz wire will give you a pure inductance and it just makes the calculations easier when you're doing it. Uh, you can get a coil that is not going to resonate at some frequency outside of what you desire. So you can wind a coil and it ends up above the amp band or below the amp band, something like that. You don't want that. So these, uh, the Litz wire helps you get a, a pure inductance. So when you wind the coil, it's on target with what the calculations say it should be. Uh, you get maximum current. So it minimizes the skin effect. And what's happening is, I guess I should have mentioned that, is you, as you shrink this wire, this skin gets closer and closer to the center. And when the wire is tiny enough, all of the current is basically flowing through the whole conductor. In this case right here, this internal part of the wire is all being wasted. There's not much current traveling through there. It's all on the outside, but as you shrink this down, this uh, skin becomes most of the wire and it's much more efficient. So why does this happen? Okay, the maximum current minimized skin effect. We can look at this diagram over here. What happens when the current is flowing this way? You see this here, the current is flowing up through this wire. And as it does that, it creates a magnetic field in this direction. And those magnetic fields create additional currents that are circulating out here. And you can see that the arrow on the outside of these little ones is pointed this way and this way. And on the inside, they're pointed down. 
So if you think about this as water and turbulent flow, and so this is water moving through a rapids or something, as it flows this way and it strikes the water coming back this way, it would slow it down. And as the water flows this way and joins water that's moving in the same direction, it moves more easily that way. So that's basically what it's doing without all the scientific mumbo jumbo. Uh, the efficient, efficiency increase uh, estimates range. So I got this from the internet and I used to be a manager in tech and I know the difference between how an engineer speaks and how marketing speaks. And so when you read some of these things, you're like, this is not how an engineer speaks. Uh, so from a company called New England Wire, they said, quote, low in the low kilohertz range efficiency gains compared to ordinary wire can exceed 50% while in low megahertz frequencies, hundred percent or more. That sounds to me like marketing, uh, because an engineer will say, you know, it will say exactly this much to exactly this much. Yeah. So this is, this has some wiggle room in it and some other sources, which just seem to be another internet phenomena where everybody quotes each other. They say, uh, efficiencies of up to 20 times or greater. So those are the pros. Let's talk about the cons. First of all, soldering is a bear. I've been soldering since I was six years old and that's 61 years ago. I've taken classes, read books, lots of experience, soldered all sorts of stuff. And I can tell you, this is one of the hardest things I have ever dealt with. First of all, every strand is insulated and has to be stripped. And we're talking about wires, uh, 175 wires in the 17546, and they are 0 0.0406 millimeters each. So you have 175 of these tiny little wires to strip. All of the strands must be joined by solder. So over here, you can look and see that, okay, this is one end of the wire and, uh, this is 16. This is only 16 strand wire. So this is one of the mistakes I made when I bought mine. I didn't get the right stuff. Also, this is, uh, 1624. So the wires are huge compared to this. Um, so this soldering joint is a maybe because I can't guarantee all these things are joined and this is a fail. You see that? I got one little strand out of there. So I have to go back and put that in there and ensure that they're all soldered together. And why is that important? Because if you miss even one strand, Litz is actually worse than a single strand copper because that one strand becomes a capacitor the entire length of the wire. So you've done exactly the opposite of what you're trying to do. And that's eliminate capacitance and a few other bad effects. And that single strand will do just that. Uh, this also includes mishandling the wire. So if one strand breaks somewhere down inside the wire, yeah, uh, whatever. And how do you test that? Uh, I have no idea. I mean, the only thing I can think of is take two wires, get a bunch of fancy equipment like a signal generator and oscilloscope and test the new coil against the old coil, a, a known coil that works and see if they got the same readings. Okay. So yeah, uh, requires advanced soldering skills, techniques, and many of the things I tried from the internet are unreliable. They just don't work. <laughs> are we surprised by that? Um, also Litz has a limited frequency range, and this is why I lost $50 buying this stuff because I got way outside the band. Uh, the maximum frequency for Litz is about 1.4 megahertz. Now that's not even to the top end of the, of the AM band. And you can go up to 2.8, but the wire starts getting really expensive and it's very, very, very fine. It's ridiculously fine. So the AM band is 535 kilohertz to 1605 kilohertz. And yeah, um, so we're outside of that. As I said before, the strands are getting very thin and hard to work with, hard to manufacture. At 10 megahertz, it's 21 uh, microns or 52 wire gauge. So that's like microscopic. And at that point, why they don't get, uh, they go higher up in band or in frequency rather, is because the insulation on each strand is starting to become a significant part of the wire size. So yeah, you're ending up with more insulation than you got wire. Okay. Some more cons. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of cons. Um, 
So each size of lits is for a narrow frequency range. And if you want 350 to 850, this would be the bottom of the AM band, then any one of these uh, should suffice. The more strands you have, the bigger the overall cable is, and it's supposed to handle more current. It will handle more current. I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be vague about that. It will handle more current. I mean, can you imagine trying to ensure 1,050 strands of wire have been properly stripped and soldered together? Yeah. Okay, 850 kilohertz to 1.4. So this is uh, middle to upper AM band. These are the different wires that will work for you. Notice they're all something 46, something 46. So 46 is the wire gauge. 10 is the number of strands, just to clarify that. The most commonly used is 17546, which is why I keep mentioning this over and over again. Uh, at the top end, we have 1.4 megahertz to 2.8 megahertz, and these are the wire sizes that are available for that. So you have like 18048. So this is 48 wire gauge with 180 strands. Again, to me, that's, I mean, unless you have a manufacturing process, that's almost unworkable for the average person. The cost is many times that of single copper wire. I've seen people say, oh, I got lits really cheap or something. Yeah, you can get the wrong lits really cheap i mean relatively cheap this was like 25 dollars for this roll but it's the wrong lit <laughs> so yeah um and i have a feeling that a lot of people on the internet don't know that there are certain types of lits for certain frequency ranges it's just like they all kind of lump it into one group and they never really talk about which one they're using so i strongly suspect they're just buying lits wire okay so uh yeah the First thing I bought was like 300 meters for $50. It was $16.28. And then I bought the right stuff here recently, 100 meters for $18. It's $10.46, so it's only 10 strands because I think I can manage 10 strands. Uh, that hasn't arrived yet, so I can't show you that. And enameled copper, well, <laughs> yeah, that's $8 to $15 for 100 to 300 meters. So it stuff's really much more reasonably priced. It is very difficult to find or use a coil inductance calculator for lits. Yeah, I, the one I found has, I, I can't remember, like 12 inputs, and I didn't even know what half the inputs meant. So uh, in a lot of cases, you just have to experiment to see if you get the inductance you want out of it. Okay, continuing on, I'm not going to go into depth on this, but there's a confusing number of array types. Uh, on top of the number slash uh, average wire or American wire gauge, there's the type one, which is a single twist. Type two, which is a twisted bundle of type one. Uh, it's woven together. So like the, this would be that type. Um, type three, pre-insulated bundles of type two wire braided together. And it goes up to type eight, which includes fiber and other stuff that's not really related to crystal radio. And on top of that, there's a left and right hand twist, which you cannot really mix unless you do it on purpose. To get the efficiency gains that can exceed 50% while yada yada yada, you need to use a basket coil weave, which is something that looks like this. And that's almost impossible to do by hand. I mean, uh, and the drawback or the problem, I guess, is that the machines that make these have not been made in 50 years. So finding a machine that's work, worth worthwhile and workable. I just found one on the internet. It looks like it had been run over by a steamroller. They want $125 for it. Yeah, so not. So the summary about Litz wire: If you are willing to pay the much higher cost for Litz, if you can get the correct Litz wire, which is probably the 17546 for AM or, you know, whatever, something, something 46 for AM. If you make the correct calculations for your coil and application, uh, if you're also keeping in mind that the cable thickness changes the calculations. So if you get the, say the 1046 versus the 17546, these are different thicknesses. So your coil calculations will differ. Um, yeah, so these will all have different parameters. Even though they're the same average wire gauge, they have different number of strands and therefore the thickness of the total cable changes. Yeah, so the calculations will be different for all of these. If you handle the wire carefully and it has no internal breaks or defects, 
if you can create efficient windings like basket weave, and if you prepare and solder the ends without missing even one strand, then maybe, maybe you will get improvements in the efficiency of 50 to 100% over single strand copper, maybe. So I'm gonna say that this is probably something left to advanced builders. Uh, it's one of those things where you can spend a lot of time and a lot of money and actually end up with a, a worse outcome than if you just did single strand copper. Okay, well that was it. Uh, hope you found that useful and interesting in your home experimentation, and especially your crystal radio building.